Hello, my name is Mrs. Stalker, and I'm a counselor here at Central Cabarrus High School. Welcome to registration 2023-2024. Um, this is the grade 12 grade level advising video uh, for students who will be entering into grade 12. Um, hopefully this information will be valuable to you as you are registering for your courses for 2023-2024. The first thing that we would like to do is introduce ourselves. Uh, this is our student services team. Uh, of course, I'm Mrs. Felker and I support students uh, last names A through C. Ms. Palmer Faber supports students with last names D through J. Ms. Nalbone supports students last names K through P. Mr. Wachowski supports students uh, last names Q through Z. Ms. Hill is our registrar and she supports students with um, through the entire alpha, as does Miss Williams, who is our school social worker. Topics that we'll be covering today um, and questions that you may have. What are graduation requirements? What are promotion requirements? Uh, credits that you've earned from grades 9 through 11? What should you sign up for in grade 12? What if you failed a class uh, either this year or a prior year? Will I have a meeting with a counselor to discuss my choices? Can I change my classes? And what do I do now? So the first thing that we'd like to do is discuss graduation requirements. So um, our core classes, your English, your math, your science, and your social studies. In English, you need to have four courses, English 1, 2, 3, and 4. In math, you must have four courses, math one, two, three, and a fourth math that aligns with your post-graduation plans. And that will be a conversation that you will definitely have with your counselor at your registration meeting. Um, for science, you must have earth science, biology, and then a physical science, which can be either chemistry, physics, or the course physical science. In social studies, this is, uh, has changed, so uh, we want to make sure that students pay close attention. Uh, you must have four credits, world history, civics, civic literacy, which is civics and economics, American history, and then our new course, which is called economics and personal finance. You also need to have one credit of health and PE and then 11 general electives. Those can be career technical, they can be um, performing arts, uh, they can be visual arts, um, any of the PEs. So you have a wide range of um, courses that you can choose from for your electives. So all of that will have a total of 27 credits which are required to graduate. So promotion requirements, as you have moved along from grade nine to 10, you were required to earn six credits. From grade 10 to 11, you were required to earn 13 credits. And from grade 11 to 12, so this year, ending this year, you have to have at least 19 credits in order to become a senior uh, in the 2023-2024 school year. This will be something that you will definitely be having a conversation with your counselor about making sure that you have all of the credits that you need uh, to move to be a senior. And then of course, the credits that you need to have uh, to graduate. So credits from grade 9 through 11, these are the courses that you took, and you probably have approximately 24 classes or credits. We do use those terms interchangeably. Classes equal credits, credits equal classes. So over the, these three years, you've taken English 1, 2, and 3, Math 1, 2, and 3, Earth science and biology, and possibly a physical science if you've already taken that. If not, then you will take that your senior year. World history, civics literacy, and American history. Um, you took your health and PE in ninth grade. And then, of course, you've chosen some electives along the way. STEM students have taken STEM English 1, 2, and 3, or a combination of AP and English classes. A STEM math 1, 2, and 3. Um, again, some of those may differ just because of um, having taken advanced math courses or having completed math one as an eighth grader. STEM earth science biology and either STEM chemistry or STEM physics. STEM world history, STEM civics and STEM American history. STEM health and PE 
and then again, um, a, a, you, the, your choice of electives, but for STEM students, those must include a CTE pathway um, that is in the STEM category, unless a student is pursuing STEM pathway three, which also requires the AP research and AP seminar class. And that, again, these are conversations. Um, if you were unsure about what you have taken or what you still need to take, these are conversations that you're definitely going to have with your counselor in your one on one meeting. So make sure that you are making notes of questions that you may have for your counselor in that meeting. What should you sign up for in grade 12? In grade 12, you should take eight classes or credits, choose your electives around your interest areas and or around what career you think you may want to go into, because this is a good time to try out some areas um, of interest for you to see if that's a career area that you're interested in. Choose your alternates very carefully. There is a good chance that you will get them. I know that some students have already experienced that. You will need to make sure that you choose English 4 or an equivalent AP class, um, a fourth math that aligns with your post um, graduation plans. Again, that is something that you definitely want to talk to your counselor about when you have your meeting. Um, the economics and personal finance class, this is definitely something new, so you want to make sure that you uh, that you sign up for that course. And then five electives. Um, keeping in mind that some of that may be foreign language, um, it's not required for graduation, but it is required to attend a four-year university. You have to have two courses of the same foreign language. So example would be Spanish 1 and Spanish 2, or Chinese 1 and Chinese 2, since those are the two uh, foreign languages that we offer here at Central. What should st STEM students sign up for in grade 12? Well, in grade 12, make sure that you are uh, taking a look at what you've already taken. Again, you know, you want to review that history um, of the courses that you've taken and the credits that you've received. But you should sign up for eight classes or credits and choosing your electives around your interests, just like um, non-STEM students. Um, and again, choosing your alternates very carefully. But when we go over here to um, our uh, table where we say STEM, STEM English 4, your math 4 um, is probably going to be either pre-calculus, discrete math, or AP calculus or AP stats. Um, remember that you must have this economics and personal finance. That is a requirement for all students for graduation. And then electives um, that you've chosen, but paying attention to make sure that you're meeting that STEM pathway completion and uh, thinking about that foreign language that you may need in order to attend um, that college or university that you're looking at applying to. What if you have failed a class? In the, class, in the case of a class failure, you should make sure that you sign up for that class because unless it is an elective, you will have to replace it with a different elective or retake that elective. Most students choose a different elective. Um, but if it's a core class, you will need to make sure that you that you make up that English, that math, um, the science or the social studies that you may have um, not been successful in um, in taking. Um, that's definitely a conversation that your counselor will have with you uh, and also trying to determine if credit recovery or grade suppression um, are the most um, advantageous for you. And again, that is a question and um, discussion for your registration appointment with your counselor. <laughs> Will I meet with a counselor? Well, I think I've said in just about every slide that you would be having a conversation with your counselor. So um, the answer to that is, is very much yes, you will be meeting with your counselor. Uh, we will have a schedule and we'll see students out of classes um, beginning February the 13th to March the 10th. We will be meeting with students in the media center and you will receive um, a notice through eHall to attend your meeting. Your teacher will also receive that notice. So 
know that you both will know um, that you need to attend that meeting. This will be an in-person meeting, so you will come to the media center and you'll meet with your counselor there. Um, so make sure that you go ahead and um, you know have maybe a list of, of questions that you may want um, answered or that you may want to discuss at that meeting. We get this question a lot. Can I change my classes? And the answer is yes, but we do have time frames and we have a um, we have plans for you to be able to do that. So uh, absolutely during your one on one meeting with your counselor, you will have already chosen your classes in PowerSchool. Um, however, at that one on one meeting, we can definitely change anything that needs to be changed, especially if you have maybe signed up for the wrong class. Please don't panic about that. We can make that change at that meeting. Around March the 22nd, you will receive a confirmation sheet that lists all the courses that you signed up for. If at that time you have changed your mind and you want to take a different class, um, you will write it on that confirmation sheet and turn it back into your counselor so that your counselor can make those changes in PowerSchool. And then around May the 17th, you will receive your schedule. And at that time, we will open up an online schedule change um, Google Doc that you can complete and request a student schedule, a schedule change at that time. And then um, your your counselor will answer because you will have to provide your email and your counselor will answer that um, and let you know by email if your schedule was able to be changed or if there's a reason because sometimes there are reasons why we can't change schedules uh, for example if a class is no longer available sometimes that happens um, if it's no longer available and we'll definitely let you know that so um, you have three opportunities to change your schedule. Um, so, you know, when you choose your schedule in PowerSchool um, in early February, um, then just know that you do have those these three opportunities. We will not be changing schedules um, in the 2023-2024 school year um, unless there is an error or a failure of some sort, just like we've always done. Um, but we do offer students these three opportunities um, to not only discuss your schedule, get, get questions answered, um, but then also make changes. So what should you do now? Be prepared. Um, so one of the things that we ask you to do is log into PowerSchool and make your course request between February the 1st and February the 8th. Ask counselor questions. Counselors will be av available in our cafeteria during all lunches, February the 6th through the 8th, to assist students, especially if you're having difficulty logging into PowerSchool, or if you have a question at that time that you'd like to have answered uh, before you uh, finalize your choices in PowerSchool, that's a good time to ask, and that will be before your individual appointment. So not only will you have access to ask questions, ask questions um, during that time frame, but then you will also have your one on one appointment with your counselor at a later time. Um, and then finally, plan to attend your one on one meeting time with your counselor sometime between February the 13th and March the 9th. Again, you will have notice of that. You'll get an e-hall pass. Um, your teacher will be notified. Um, so we want to make sure that that students do get those meetings so that you can have any questions that you have um, that you have. Make sure that we get them answered. OK, so I hope that this has been helpful information and um, we will uh, begin this process again February the 1st. Um, so if you have any questions, you can email email counselors or just plan to uh, meet with us at the times that I've I've outlined uh, in this presentation. Um, if you have questions about the presentation or additional um, concerns, then that would be a great, great thing to have a discussion with your counselor. Uh, either in that one-on-one -on -one meeting or during the times that will be available in the cafeteria. Thank you so much.